case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In the mid 1990s, during an atmosphere permeated with substantial losses from toxic tort cases, the Society of Lloyds took decisive action. It created the Reconstruction and Renewal R and R Plan an initiative designed to provide reinsurance for pre-1993 liabilities. This plan banked on the reinsurance premiums paid by registered underwriters known as NAMES. However, not all NAMES were on board, with 5% refusing to contribute. As a result, Lloyds utilized their legal rights to appoint a substitute agent to sign on behalf of these non-accepting NAMES. One such non-accepting duo was Jillian and Uva Seaman Netto. Their refusal to pay reinsurance premiums propelled Lloyds to sue them in England for breach of contract in 1996. The court in England ruled in Lloyds' favor, a judgment that only added to the Seaman Netos' woes. On the other side of the pond, Lloyds sought recognition and enforcement of these English judgments in the United States under the district's Uniform Foreign Money Judgments Recognition Act of 1995. The Seaman Netos didn't back down, putting up affirmative defenses which, although valiant, were struck down as legally insufficient. They attempted to fire back with accusations of negligent misrepresentation, fraud, consumer fraud, and breach of fiduciary duty. However, all their claims were held at bay by a potent weapon, the Forum Selection Clause. It's a provision stated in the general undertaking that gives exclusive jurisdiction to the English courts over any disputes related to Lloyd's underwriting. The United States District Court for the District of Columbia didn't stray far from its English counterpart. It ruled in favor of Lloyd's, echoing the dismissal of the Seaman Netos's counterclaims, citing the Forum Selection Clause, and declaring them responsible for the reinsurance premiums they failed to pay. The court's decision added another layer of validity to the English judgments. After all, the Recognition Act allows for defenses of bias or procedural unfairness in the rendering of the foreign judgment, but the Seaman Netos apparently could not furnish the proof required. In this transatlantic legal dance between Lloyd's and the Simon Nettos, every move seemed to be in the former's favor. The English verdict, the American enforcement, and finally, the court's affirmation, all underpinned by policies that demonstrated Lloyd's foresight and the resilience of its rules and regulations. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.